Okay, let's go down to Bill Grubb, see if we can get a report on Holbrook. Bill? Uh, Wes, on the uh, field, he stuck his head into Marcus Dyer's hip as Marcus was going to try to run him over. Uh, he hit him square, and I'm not sure if it's, uh, it is definitely the neck and shoulder area that they're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, the first part of it, they were worried about a, a, a neck injury. Now they went to the shoulder, and uh, it is definitely a separated or dislocated shoulder, and, and they were trying to get it back in as quickly as they could. Uh, Dr. Canodal on the Williams staff went out there, and uh, that was the problem. It was a separated shoulder. At least it was partially separated. And uh, they were worried about the neck first and the shoulder second. Okay, whenever, of course, you get one of those neck or shoulder injuries, you've got to be awful careful in moving that youngster off the field, Bill, to avoid, of course, any other further damage. Well, I'm surprised they didn't call the uh, rescue squad out with the wagon. They are still walking him off the field real slow. Now, he'll have to be replaced by Tony Money, who goes both ways. Now, they have 10 men on the field, if I haven't counted right, that are going both ways. Everybody except... Well, no, Scott Church goes both ways. They got 10 men on the field right now that are going both ways. The Iron Men of Shelby. It's third and 11 from his own 47 for Stephen Feimster. Two wide flankers left, back to pass, fake to Turner. Now, over the middle, it is going to be incomplete. He just flat dab threw that ball behind Kenny Jones, the intended receiver. The nearest defender over there was Colonel Hopper, and Hopper... Looked like he had a better shot at it, but Feimster just flat dab, not passing well right now, so it's a punting situation for the Bulldogs and Nathan Jennings. This time he gets off a low end over end. It'll bounce about the 20. Take oh. a real Bulldog bounce inside the 10, inside the 5-yard line. It'll be down at the 4-yard line as the defender back there, Tony Money, did not even attempt to field it, and that is going to be a heck of a roll for the Bulldogs, and just like they did in the opening kickoff, they put them in really bad field position, a punt of 49 yards, and no return. Shelby takes over, first and 10 at their own four-yard line. They began the ball game on their own eight, couldn't move it, so now they're really back down there, Wes. And the Williams defense now, the offense couldn't get it done on what we thought would be an important drive to, or at least Williams, as, as far as morale goes, the defense will have to respond on their chance. Straight ahead handoff to Tim Rhodes, another one of those. Well, they all are going both ways now. We know that. Straight ahead goes Rhodes over his own left side behind Maddox and Pearson before Junior Crisp and Robert Lashley bring him down. A pickup from the four out to the eight. It'll be a four-yard pickup. Second down and six for the Golden Lions. So first possession of the third quarter for Lions. They lead six to nothing in their state 3A playoff game from here at the Burlington Memorial Stadium. Harper and Rhodes, the setbacks, and Jerome George pitches quickly to Dunsey Harper, his leading rusher on the year, and somebody really blitzed through there. Mario Williamson and Andrew Wiley make the stop, and the defense now, as Bill pointed out, are firing off the ball a little quicker than they were. They were getting beaten the first half, but the Bulldog defense really firing off the ball. No gain, a loss of a yard, back to the seven. A big third down for the Golden Lions third and seven from their own eight-yard line, seven-yard line. 7.57 to go in the third quarter. They go back to the full wishbone with a split left end, Colonel Hopper. The Rome George back to pass, lobbing it downfield. Wide open is tight end. Scott Church was way behind anybody being chased inside the 20, the 15, the 10-yard line. Jeff Ball finally caught him. And how in the world a tight end got so wide open on third and seven from the seven all the way down to the Bulldog 12-yard line at 85 yards. No, at 75 yard pass play. Unbelievable that time. Church just found a seam. It's obviously something that may have been set up earlier. And Bill Grubbs, it looks like they set him up with the run. They had to throw it on third and seven. And they went to what was more or less a bread and butter play, it appears. Yeah, they really did. I think there it was a combination of they had them set up and wait and Williams had already called an all-out blitz coming with the safeties, and there was just nobody over the middle to cover. From the 13 on first and 10, Rhodes goes off his own right side, and the entire Williams defensive line rises to the occasion inside the 10-yard line, led by Chris Tilly and Mario Williamson and Carl Lee down to about the eight-yard line, a five-yard pickup. That surprise play going for 75 yards, setting the Golden Lions up in great field position at the 12, 13-yard line of the Bulldogs. 6.58 to go in the third quarter. 
and the Rome George under center. Pro set, fakes to the full, gives to the halfback, Dunsey Harper, and Harper is going to be stacked up at about the seven yard line for hardly any gain at all. And the Bulldog defense now really having to test its mettle after that long pass play to a tight end that was really that wide open. Pick up down to the seven, six and a half yard line to be a long third and four for the Golden Lions of Shelby. They already lead it six to nothing on two Clint Walton and field goals. And they now have a third down and long. The ball spotted about on the seven yard line of the Williams High Bulldogs. Sends a flanker out wide to the left. The full house wishbone behind Theron George, the quarterback. Long count. Now one of the halfback moves up just outside the right end. Theron George pitches. It's going to be a fumble recovered by the Bulldogs. The pitch back was thwarted on a great defensive effort by Junior Chris, who got to the quarterback George and then his pitch out was fumbled and the Bulldogs recovered. It was Andrew Wiley who finally came up with the football. You're right though the pursuit by Junior Crisp and the pressure on the pitch was the key to that play and oh Nelly a big turnover that time. What a way to bite the bullet after giving up a 75 yard pass that Jeff Ball saved a touchdown run on then the defense comes up with the big fumble recovery on the nine and a half yard line. Williams takes over first and ten. Beamster has a flanker right, split in left, eye formation. Fakes to Ricky Turner, he's going for it all. I hear in the flat, and his man fell down. Darrell Teeley fell down out in the right flat about the 25-yard line, and Theron George was over there to cover. That's a little bit of gambling on the part of Shelby coach Jim Taylor that time, Bill. He could have really stuck with something off tackle or off guard and then set it up for another Clint Waltney field goal. Instead, he went to try and turn the corner that time with Harper, and they fumble the football away. Wes, I don't know if it is just my observation or what, but Feimster had a shoulder injured early in the year, and he is not throwing that ball well at all. Second and ten for his own nine-yard line. Flank a wide right, eye formation, handoff to Ricky Turner straight ahead. Nowhere and nothing as Turner is slammed to the ground by Tim Rhodes. We heard about all their offense, but their defense is also pretty fantastic. Todd Pearson making that stop also. 5.20 to go in the third quarter, no score. Gain of about, uh, half, give him nothing. Third and ten. Third and ten. And Mike Scarlotta brings the play in. Coming out will be Eddie Wilson. A big third down for the Bulldog offense here deep in their own territory. Midway through the third quarter, trailing by a score of six to nothing. On the night, they're two of seven in third down conversions. Keeley out to the left, in motion to the right goes Kenny Jones. Beamster spins, hands off, straight ahead, dive play to his fullback, and nothing as the Golden Lion defense was waiting, I mean waiting, led by Tim Rhodes and Duncy Harper, and it'll be a punting situation as quickly going in to punt will be Nathan Jennings. So they did bite the bullet, but now they've got to give it up. Boy, you never know that these 10 guys flip-flop on the other side of the football. They run extremely hard both ways. Nathan kicking it away from Tony Mone. Mone lets it bounce. He almost fumbled it at the 44-yard line and goes down there. So it ends up being a 34-yard kick with very little, if any, return. But great field position for the Shelby Golden Lions. 4.20 to go in the third quarter. And Shelby out in front, 6 to nothing. And the Bulldog defense, who has spent a lot of time on that field, back out there once again. And that may be another factor. Remember, Williams using that two-platoon system. Now one end of that platoon may be getting a little tired because the defense, in their second possession of the contest, the Shelby offense kept them out there over seven and a half minutes. On first and ten from the Bulldog, 43, Jerome George hands it off to his fullback. Straight ahead goes Tim Rhodes, the senior, who has replaced their injured player. He is doing a heck of a job both ways. Junior Crisp and Andrew Wiley making the stop for only a yard pickup. So the Bulldogs, again, facing a really, really tough situation inside their own territory. Boy, I tell you what, that time they didn't get the touchdown on the uh, fumble out there on the exchange from George to Harper. Be interesting to see if Jim Taylor, if they get a fourth and long here, does he bring Gwaltney on to try the, the field goal from the other side of the county? We saw him kick on this far on second and nine from the 42. George fakes, keeps, rolls left, and he cuts right between two Bulldog tacklers, breaks loose, breaks into the clear, 10-5 touchdown. 
And Tommy Spoon said earlier this week, we have got to control that quarterback. He is just like Holloway at Oklahoma. He loves to run, and we can't let him get outside the pocket. That time he got outside the pocket, a 42-yard touchdown run to put the Golden Lions of Shelby up front. 12 to nothing with 3.16 to go in the third quarter. And a beautiful run. He ran right between two defenders and then outran, after breaking a couple of tackles, outran the rest of the defense. Jerome George will hold, and Clint Gwaltney will try the extra point. The snap, the spot, the kick, and it is going to be up, and no good. He missed. After 52 consecutive this season, he misses an extra point off wide to the right. Boy, that may be bigger than the game itself. Let's go down to Bill Grubbs. Bill, did something just break open for Jerome George? Did the blocking break down, or what exactly happened? Well, George got on the outside, and he faked one pitch to his tailback, and as he cut up field, his tailback stayed with him. He broke the linebackers, and as he got in the secondary, he faked another pitch. They went with that fake uh, to the tailback, and he just broke into the clear. Okay, okay, that's that the way good. it looks from the sideline. And I tell you, it was a beautiful run by George. Beautiful and run by George and that extra point. I know I've seen them on TV say it. That could come back to haunt you, but right now the Bulldogs have to worry <laughs> about even getting on the board, much less scoring two touchdowns and two extra points with about 15 minutes left in this ball game. The Tarbor, the Tarbor, the Shelby Golden Lions are just as explosive as their press notices said they were, and I really haven't seen too much evidence of anybody being injured except the one player on the sidelines, <laughs> Surratt, walking on crutches. They are really, really a good football team. Walton will kick it off. Williamson and turn it back deep. It'll go to Tony Williamson on the left side. It may, nope. Yes, it did. Finally went out of bounds at the five-yard line. I think in high school they can bring it out to the 35 if they want to. And Gwaltney, a little frustrated with himself about kicking it out of bounds, was down in the, uh, kneeled down right over the top of the 40 line, line yard line and put the T to his face mask. And, uh, he's a bit frustrated about kicking the ball out of bounds. Well, if I'm not mistaken, he had uh, 52 extra points this season. I don't think he'd missed an extra point and 15 field goals. And he's not used to missing, and I'm sure he's not used to making bad kicks. But we pointed out, we've seen the players slip they have very poor footing and right in the middle of the field where they kick from 35 yard line now you can see he is not getting good footing to place that left foot to kick it with he is a soccer style kicker and he doesn't kick straight ahead so it's more important for him to be able to plant that left foot down 12 to nothing michael g the senior lineman he wants the home fans up here on the east side of memorial stadium for this kick return bill okay tony Back deep along with Ricky Turner. Walter will kick it away again. Tony Williamson on the left side. He'll get the kick. Nope, Ricky Turner's going to take it on the bounce at the 10. They form the wall to the right side to try to get Turner open. He slips and still comes out across the 35. And so far, the Bulldogs have had real good punt returns or kickoff returns. Just another one out to the 37-yard line to give them fairly decent field position. But the offense has got to put something together with 3.09 to go in the third quarter and trailing 12 to nothing. A score from Memorial Stadium in Charlotte in the third quarter. Anthony Barber and the Trojans of Garner lead Harding 20 to 7. Uh, Garner is undefeated, I understand. <laughs> Beamster, back to pass, over the middle, in and out of the hands of Kenny Jones and intercepted by Colonel Hopper. Hopper going down the right sidelines, knocked out of bounds at the 30, and I'll say it once again, Beamster is not throwing the ball as well as he threw earlier. I don't know if his shoulder is re-injured. He's throwing a three-quarter arm and is slinging the ball instead of throwing it, and that one was way over the head of Kenny Jones, and it went right through his hands, and Hopper intercepted and returned it all the way to the Bulldog 31-yard line. Super return by Colonel Harper after he made the interception, being aware of where he was on the field and moving it down the right side, and as a result, the Golden Lion get excellent field position. Fantastic field position, and once again, the Williams defense has to go on to the field. Two men to the left. Hand off to Tim Rhodes, the fullback, trying to go straight ahead. Chris Tilly, along with Junior Chris, bringing him down. 
at about the 30-yard line, uh, Jeff Marsh in on the play also, a one-yard pickup. It'll be second down and nine for the Golden Lions, a very opportunistic ball club. Two minutes to go now in the third quarter, and the Golden Lions sitting under control, in control of this ball game after that hopper interception. Put the ball squarely on the 30-yard line, a flanker to the right, halfback just outside the left end, pro set, and George on the same play to score the touchdown rolls left, but this time he still got away from three tacklers and was finally bounced out of bounds at the line of scrimmage, but he must have Vaseline on his legs or something. He just kept sliding away from would-be tacklers. Finally, Andrew Wiley knocked him out of bounds. Excellent athletic ability as Therome George was just simply trying to stick with the play that time. He had Harper for the pitch on the left side. Harper finally gave in and threw a block to try and assist George. He was met one time and then finally Alma had to be rid out, rode out of bounds before the play was blown dead. He's a very, very good quarterback. We've seen some good quarterbacks in this playoff series. 1.43 to go in the third quarter. Big third down and nine for the Golden Lions from the Williams 31-yard line. George back to pass out in the flat. It will be complete to Colonel Hopper, his favorite target, and Hopper gets a bad spot right on the 20-yard line, and I don't know if he has the first down or not. They will have to measure, but... The uh, pass was caught. The other official says it is a first down. Big first down as Hopper just did a straight square out in the right flat pattern. And the quarterback, Jerome George, threw the ball actually before Hopper made his turn all the way down to the 20 and a half yard line of the Bulldogs. It'll be first and 10 for the Golden Lions. Flankers coming out wide to the left. It'll be Weaver and Money. A slot back in the slot, and the handoff to the other halfback, Duncy Harper. Harper tries it on left side. Gets down inside the 20. At the bottom of the pile is Robert Lashley, Mario Williamson, helping out on the stop. But it is a good three-yard pickup. It'll be second out and seven. 58 seconds to go in the third quarter. Colonel Hopper comes out wide to the left. Second and about seven from inside the 20-yard line. Full wishbone hands off to the third halfback, and no, he doesn't. He keeps and keeps sliding off a of tackle, going out of bounds inside the 15-yard line, and the Shelby crowd across the way wanting a, a late tackling penalty, but with this kid, you don't know when to quit tackling. I may have followed him into the dressing room at halftime. He will not go down. He will not, and that time, Therome George doing it all on his own as he had to literally almost about run for his life in order to try and get the first down. He's a bit short by about two yards. So they mark it at the 13, and he's got to get just to the other side of the 11 for the first down. They'll get this play off before the quarter is over. It'll be third and two. Coming wide to the left is Charles Weaver, full house wishbone, and the handoff to the second man, Duncy Harper. And I think Duncy Harper has the first down near the 10-yard line. He had to get to just about the 10-yard line. The officials may want to measure. No, they say he didn't make it. They marked it on the 11-yard line. It'll be fourth and one for the Golden Lions. Fourth and one. They're going to go for it. They do not bring Gwaltney in. Fourth and a yard. And the Golden Lions are going to go for it. Full house wish ball. Split left in. Hand off to the fullback, straight ahead, touchdown for Tim Rose. Big hole on the right side between Roger Hutchins, the center, and Marcus Mitchell, the right guard. A big, big hole for the fullback, Tim Rhodes, who is running in the place tonight of Surratt. And Shelby jumps out to a 19, 18 to nothing lead with three seconds going in the quarter. And I don't know, that may be just a little much. Now the quarterback, Jerome George, will hold. That was about a 11 or 12-yard touchdown run by the fullback road, but he got a great block. The snap, the spot, the kick by Gwaltney. This time it's good, and the Shelby Golden Lions take a 19 to nothing lead over the Williams High Bulldogs with three seconds to go in the third quarter. We'll be back with the kickoff in 30 seconds.
professionals at James L. Massey Incorporated, South Church Street in Burlington. Bill, you got something down there on the sidelines? Yeah, the Williams defense is noticeably tired. Uh, they're substituting a lot. They're wanting in, they're wanting out, and it's just really confusing. They're really getting down emotionally. Uh, Stephen Feimster is just hanging his head. He doesn't understand why he's not throwing the ball well, and I'm not sure if this Shelby defense, even though they go both ways, is not stronger than the Williams defense right now. Ricky Turner takes a long kickoff from Gwaltney, and he was in the end zone, and in high school, you can't run out. Once takes the plane, so they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Bulldogs line up in a spread formation. One setback behind Stephen Feimster, and Feimster back to pass. Quick out pass, complete the flea flicker. It's now another flea flicker back to Darrell Teeley. How do you like that? Double flea flickers on the last play of the third quarter, and that'll be the end of the third quarter. Bulldogs trail Shelby 19 to nothing. We'll have the fourth quarter in 60 seconds. For all weather performance and a quiet, comfortable ride, Bill Anders suggests the advanced TA radio from BF Goodrich. Engineered for long mileage and backed by BF Goodrich's warranty, your assurance of quality, the advantage TA. For a dependable ride and professional service, visit Bill Anders Burlington Tire Service, 1222 South Church Street, Burlington. Birds is the only way to fly. Birds is reaching for the sky. Now Birds is miles ahead of the rest. The new Birds has landed thousands of new customers with lower prices and more variety on every aisle. Back again. Well, who's got time to fly all over town? Birds has got it all. Variety, quality, freshness. I'm high on Birds. Birds is the only way to fly. Birds! Only 12 minutes left in the ball game. The Bulldogs trail Shelby by 19 to nothing. Flanker right, split in left. Beamster back to pass. That was a first down. Out in the flat, it will be complete to Marcus Dyer, his tight end, for about a five-yard pickup. Tim Rhodes, Mr. Golden Lion, all over the place, making the stop on Dyer. Bill, Jeff Marson's tallied some figures for us, and the biggest one that glares out at you is the 141 yards of rushing that the Golden Lions have built up tonight on 32 carries. Williams can only retaliate with 40 yards of rushing. Completely containing Ricky Turner, the NC State-bound senior, who played on that 85 championship team as a sophomore. Second and short. The draw play to Ricky Turner, and once again, they are all over Ricky Turner. That play developed a good seven yards behind the line of scrimmage, and by the time Turner got to the line, looked like it was a hole there, and Scott Church coming over quickly along with John Davis to close up the hole. Not a first down. Out to the 38-yard line. It'll be third down and two. Third and two, and the Bulldogs on the evening have not been too proficient in the third down conversion department. They are two of eight. And another one here. Third and two, Femster's pass. Out in the flat, complete to Cheely. Cheely takes it and runs out of bounds near the 48-yard line for another first down. And right now, the Bulldogs desperately needing to put together a drive. Duncy Harper chasing him out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Bulldogs trailing 19 to nothing. Right now, they just need that first score. 10.47 to go in the fourth and final quarter of the State 3A playoffs. From here at the Burlington Memorial Stadium, Shelby leading the Bulldogs. Jones to the left, Cheeley to the right, Turner in the slot. Themester again, back to pass, out in the flat. It will be fought for, flag on the play. And I don't know who had better position, Wes. That's going to be close. Kenny Jones caught the pass. It'll be interesting. I think they're going to whistle it on Colonel Harper for the pass interference. It looked almost, Bill, like he went over the back of Kenny Jones. And a great catch by Jones on both knees at the 39. Are well, they going to refuse the penalty, I think, and take the, uh, no? They're going to take it from the spot of the previous foul, uh, previous spot, which will be 15 yards. The pass was only good for 12, so they're going to gain a yard on taking the penalty and another first down, and that would be a close one to call because it looked like 
that Colonel Harper was right in position to take the interception, and Kenny Jones made the catch in some way. The Bulldogs got a 15-yard penalty. First and 10 from the 37-yard line of the Golden Lions. Spread formation, one set back. Tony Williamson tries that big hole, bounces off of tacklers, trying to get outside, and he's gonna fumble the football. It was stripped away from Tony Williamson as he tried to go off the right tackle, kept going, kept running, kept fighting, kept pulling away, and then the ball was stripped out of his hands from behind, and Williamson dropped the ball, and it was fallen on by Scott Church, who had that long pass reception a while ago. So the ball will go over on the fumble recovery by the Golden Lions, and Wes, I don't know. That should just about, barring a minor miracle, be the, be the story. They really needed to get something on the board there, Bill, and the Williamson fumble nullifies any chance to do so, and they were very, very fortunate because it was right after a big penalty call against the Golden Lions. Well, we know they can uh, control the time on the clock. Handoff goes to Rhodes. And Rhodes going off his own left side, and as Bill Grubb said a moment ago, a very tired Bulldog defense, and Bill, they didn't want to go back out on the field. They really didn't want to go back on the field. You can see when that fumbled, everybody was screaming, we got to have it, we got to have it. And when they realized they didn't have it, it was really one of the things like, you know, it was like a last gasp of breath, and they had to be back on the field, and, and they're really dead tired right now. Well, the first run from scrimmage by Rhodes picked up from the 33 to the 47 for 14 yards, first and 10 for the Golden Lions. They go into their spread formation, and George hands off straight ahead to his fullback, Rhodes, and he gets nowhere. Quick score from down in Thomasville. Whiteville on top in the fourth quarter, 7-6, to six, and a tight one at the 3A ranks. Good ball game down in Whiteville. You heard the Murphy runaway score, and right now, <laughs> I think Garner's ahead of Hart, Charlotte Harding down in Charlotte. It's Garner is ahead. Ranks. And uh, Thomasville is ahead, and uh, that ball game looks Murphy to be. Murphy was way ahead. <laughs> yeah, Murphy was. Well, Whiteville's ahead, seven to six in the fourth. That looks to be the best of the four games shaping up on the Friday night. Second and ten for the Golden Lions, and the handoff to Tim Rhodes again, right straight up the middle, and he is going to be stacked up by the entire Bulldog defensive line. Gets out to the 50-yard line. It'll be third down and about seven. Rhodes didn't even figure into a majority of the uh, Shelby rushing stats, but tonight on 13 carries, he has 54 yards, and Tim Rhodes has uh, filled the vacant space of Cedric Surratt quite ably tonight, Bill. Well, I know he had to come in the game last week right after the first quarter. That Surratt got injured early, and Coach Sam Storr was very impressed with him, and I can see why. I can see why. Be third down and a long six at the 50-yard line. George on the reverse gives off to Dunsey Harper, and somebody breaking through the line did a great job at knocking him down in the backfield. It looks like Junior Crisp hit him from the side and dropped him, and the Bulldogs' offense should get the ball back in fairly decent position as it's going to be a punting situation for the Golden Lions. Williams High School will send. Well, nobody back there. Where's Kenny Jones? Kenny Jones standing on the line. He's going to rush the punt. They're they going to bring you to Calvary. How about that? They're not putting anybody back. They've got 11 men on the line. They are rushing the punt, and they block it. It worked. I don't believe it. They it blocked worked. it forward. And they a heads-up play. Put 11 men on the line, nobody back. And if I'm not mistaken, the young gentleman coming here, 50. Jeff Marsh. Jeff Marsh blocked the punt, and that gamble paid off. Of course, it couldn't have done them. A roll into the end zone, a roll dead on the 10-yard line. Goes out of bounds or recovered at the Shelby 49-yard line. How many, Jeff? Four yards on the punt. Four-yard punt. <laughs> a really great gamble by the Bulldogs. Hope it's not too late. 7.50 to go in the ball game. Spread formation. Beamster, long count. Now to back to pass again, out in the flat for Cheely. It's going to be caught by Darrell Cheely as Colonel Hopper was uh, tackling him inside the 40 to the 38-yard line, close to a first down. And Cheely was right between two defenders, and the officials are going to bring it in to measure. So with timeout on the field, Bulldogs trailing 19 to nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Thank you. The staff at the original Sal's Italian Restaurant just wanted to say thank you for making Sal's one of the most successful restaurants in Burlington. Sal's is a family restaurant with a friendly atmosphere. They choose from our impressive menu with over 100 items, including our outstanding Italian seafood, steaks, lobster, chicken, veal, pasta, subs, pizza, and more. 
Try Sal's for lunch or dinner. And don't forget our takeout and delivery services. That's the original Sal's Italian restaurant. Huffman Mill Road. Professionals at James L. Massey Incorporated, South Church Street in Burlington. Okay, back here at uh, <clears throat> Burlington Memorial Stadium. There's an injured player down. I wish you had something to say before we went away. Colonel Harper is the injured player, the uh, wide receiver slash defensive back for the, the two-way uh, Shelby Golden Lions, and Harper is still down, but a great catch by Cheeley. The officials have marked it as a first down at the Shelby 37. So it will be first and ten for the Bulldogs when uh, play resumes. But Harper, an interesting story. He's the only guy on the team who wears the black. Uh, it appears from uh, up top here on the east stands that it is a black sock. But in essence, it is not a black sock, Bill Grubbs. It is those workout pants or those aerobic pants, isn't it? It really is. It's, it's sort of like the running pants you see, the skin tight. Uh, a lot of people call them Lexan pants. Uh, they're, they're the running pants that really keep you warmer. Uh, the thing that uh, they're working on right now is his shoulder up top. Uh, they can't tell if it's separated or dislocated. They thought for a moment he was having a problem with his sternum. He was having a little problem breathing, but that was just the motion of where he, where he had his shoulder moving. Okay, Bill, and Bulldogs now with a first down at the 37-yard line of the Golden Lions. Flanker right, but in left. Slot back in the slot left. One set back behind Stephen Feimster. Feimster, quick pass out in the flat. Complete to Darrell Cheeley. Cheeley hit and knocked out of bounds just inside the 30. That only takes about seven seconds off the clock to make a 7.36 to go. Dan Johnson knocking him out of bounds at the 29-yard line. A pickup of about eight. It'll be second down and two for the Bulldogs who desperately need a score. Larry Wheeler, the junior fullback, comes in and brings in the play for the sidelines, replacing Tony Williamson for the Bulldogs. Cheeley going out wide to the right. Kenny Jones, left turn setting in the slot, left the short side of the field. Seems to slip and he starts to be a to the middle complete to Marcus Dyer the big tight end has a first down inside the 10 yard line but that was really a blitz being put on the, the quarterback Feimster and there is that yellow flag on the play the back judge for the black ineligible receiver again on the Bulldogs on field that's the second time we've seen that tonight and a second costly one because they both came after complete passes of course they were incomplete they wouldn't uh, call them but still a costly <laughs> costly penalty That'll bring it back to the 34-yard line, and they lose down also. So that's going to be a crucial, crucial ineligible receiver downfield. Third down and about seven. Third down and about seven from the 34-yard line. 7-16 to go in the ball game now. Bulldogs trail 19 to nothing. Flanker left, split in right. Slot back, Ricky Turner in the slot. Seems to be in blitzed again. Gets back, sets, flings it downfield for Ricky Turner. Incomplete down near the five-yard line, and once again, Wes, it'll probably show up. The coaches will tell us next week. He is throwing the ball at a three-quarter arm motion, and he's slinging it. He's not throwing that ball at the pretty motion we saw him last week. He had that early season shoulder trouble. Bill Grubbs, that time they looked like they were trying to free Turner out of the backfield down the sideline. Any reason behind that? Well, it, right now they're just trying to mix up some stuff that they haven't really used a lot this year because Shelby has them so well scouted. It seems like everything Williams tries to do, Shelby's one step ahead of him. Should Williams score right here, uh, Coach Sam Story has already mapped out the rest of the ball game for the Bulldogs. They have some tricks up their sleeves, so you know the, the big thing right here is they're going to have to put the ball in the end zone. Well, they got the fourth and seven, and Stephen Feimster, 12 of 23, 141 yards in the contest. A well, three-quarter motion or not, that's not bad, but uh, Feimster, as you pointed out, Bill, does appear to be having some trouble throwing the football. And on the season, I think he's hitting about 62%. Even though he missed three games, of course, that had nothing to do with his percentage. But he has much better percent than 50% on the season. And right here, the Bulldogs cannot afford to try a long field goal from Bundren or to give up the ball on the punt. So they're going to go for it. Famester, 65 of 106 for 1,048 yards coming into tonight. And you're right, a 61% completion rate. And boy, it is a fourth and long, a fourth and seven at the 34 now for the Bulldogs. Yeah. Flanker and split in out to the right. I formation behind Feimster and the Lions. Blitz then back off. 
Beams to back to pass, looking for Turner out of the backfield. Inter oh, it was going to be intercepted. Charlie Weaver had his eyes set on it, and he didn't have anything but about 14 strikes between him and Peter. And just flat down, let the ball slide through his hand. And that fourth down and going over on Downs West may have sealed the Bulldogs' hopes for a 1987's 3A title. Boy, I tell you what, that time Weaver, he let it go through his arms and it bounced on the ground into the hands of Darrell Cheely. And Darrell, opportunist that he was, tried to turn and run downfield. The official on top of the play, though, blew his whistle in time. And Colonel Harper, who had gone off the field a moment ago, is now back in, and he comes to the near side on this first and 10. From the 34, 6.56 to go in the ball game. You know that Shelby's going to try to run out the clock. Full house wishbone behind Jerome George. Hands off to the fullback, Tim Rhodes, going straight ahead. Mario Williamson along with for the Williams High Bulldogs make the stop. Well, he, doesn't get anything. he doesn't get anything on it, and I'm sure that's just fine with Jim Taylor. Well, they're going to take the full 25 seconds or 30 seconds you have in high school, and I don't blame them because they're sitting on a comfortable 19-0 lead, and they would be the first since Williams did it back in 80-81 to defend their 3A title. Even Havelock never was able to do that. Hand off this time to the other half back, coming around to the right side, the Williams defensive line, and Mario Williamson making the stop, along with big, big Chris Macy and uh, Doug Blackwell for one yard, call it two yards, out to the 36-yard line. And I think right now we see the same thing we saw last week. I think these boys are kind of just playing with the clock and don't care if they have to punt it away because the Bulldogs have got to score three times. That's exactly right. And Williams is going to have to get the football back, score, and then, as Bill pointed out a moment ago, down on the sideline, going to have to start it with the gadget plays. But they've got to get the football right now. On third and long, fake to the full and give off to the other half back. Out a flag into the middle of that line where our most favorite TV commentator says that indicates there's somebody in there holding. You know. Dunsey Harper on the carry off the left side, and it is a hold against, against the uh, Golden Lions. I don't think they'll take it, West, because they got them in a punting situation at the 40-yard line, and the Bulldogs need their hands on the ball and the offense on the field. If they come out later and somebody can divide up the time... Boy, they are going to take the penalty. Oh, they are going to take the penalty. They want the ball close. It's only 10 yards. I... Don't understand that. Still 5.35 to go, but if they add up the times, I'm sure the defense has been on the field over twice as long in this ball game as the offense for the Bulldogs, and we kind of thought it would be the other way around. Four penalties tonight for the Golden Lions, 42 yards. So it's a, like last week's Tarboro Williams game, Bill, this has been another relatively uh, penalty-free contest. Of course, the Bulldogs, two ineligible receiver calls tonight. Really, really stand out. On a third down and about 14 from his own 30-yard line, George just hands off straight ahead. There's another flag from right into the foul. It looks like a personal foul. Back Dunsey the ball here, and now it looks like there is going to be a personal foul against the Bulldogs. Yes. Automatic or stamp. That is a crucial, crucial call against the Williams High Bulldogs that will be enough from the act on into the run for the first down. Puts it out to midfield with 5.05 to go. So that is a big, big personal foul against the Bulldogs. They put it out to the 50-yard line. First and dead well, the length of the football into Bulldog territory, and the Golden Lions succeed in keeping the ball and running that clock out. A score down from the southeast, the Wolfpack of Whiteville. Fourth quarter, three minutes left on top of Thomasville, 14 to six. Flanker to the right, and the I formation handoff to Tim Rhodes, the fullback, just diving straight ahead as the Golden Lions are content to just run out that clock, even if they have to punt the ball away, but the Bulldogs are helping them in every way possible. But they didn't take that third down penalty a moment ago and make it fourth down where they would have had the kick. Next play, they get a personal foul called on them, and then they come up and have a really, really, really less of a chance to get their hands on the football. And, you know, another, another first down is going to take close to two minutes off the clock. On second and 10 from the 49-yard line, the long count, a lot of moving in the backfield. It just hadn't come set yet. Only one setback behind Therome George. He pitches to Dunsey Harper, and Harper is really going to be shanghaied by Junior Crisp of the Bulldogs back at the 45-yard line. But like I said, they are just running 
time off the clock and don't care if they have to kick away because they know our Bulldogs very unlikely to score three times with only 3.45 to go in the football game. They're 8 of 14 in third down conversion tonight, and I think that kind of tells the story a little bit. They've gotten uh, some of them by the run, some by the pass. Uh, of course, the Rome-Georgia touchdown run came third down play. They've been awfully proficient, and now they're just waiting clock. From zone 46, the Rome George faces a third down and 14. He just hands off to his fullback, Tim Rhodes, straight ahead, and the Golden Lions are content to just kick the ball away. A very jubilant and uh, excited out from Shelby. Uh, we heard somebody outside say they had 20 charter buses brought people <laughs> up here. It looks like they got a crowd of close to 2,000 over across the way. They're very proud of their Shelby Golden Lions, which they should well be. Now, a running situation. Kenny Pauley will punt. For the Golden Lions, Kenny Jones back. They didn't get it there to block it this time. Kicked it away from Jones. Now there is a flag, and that's going to be about the crushing blow as the Bulldogs run into the punter, Kenny Pauley. And the official says personal foul, roughing the kicker. That's another automatic first down. And I think the Bulldog player that roughed the kicker is a little bit injured. He may have a still have the bottom of the shoe in his chest because he ran right into him. And it's going to be another first down. West is going to give the ball back to the Golden Lions, and about everything that possibly could go wrong has gone wrong in this ball game for the Bulldogs, mostly of their own making. Yeah, and what I think you're seeing now is some of the simple frustration that develops over the course of a 15-game season. And, uh, of course, when you make it to the state playoffs and the championship game, this is a 15-game season. And uh, it's not easy to get uh, behind like the Bulldogs have tonight and uh, and come back and, and when things go wrong for you, frustration starts to air out. And I think that's what some of the stuff we're seeing now. It is going to be a uh, personal foul, or it is a rough in the kicker penalty, the an kicker. automatic first down. And Bill Grubbs has relocated in himself on the far sideline to the Shelby side, and we'll be going to him in a moment for some comments. But right now, they're still attending to the roughing the kicker player. Okay, they're going to take a little while to get it off. It'll be a first down, down to the 38-yard line of the Bulldogs. And with time out on the field, Bulldogs trailing 19 to nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Drive with confidence on the BF Goodrich XLM HT from Bill Anders Burlington Tire Service. Designed for all seasons, the XLM HT is built to deliver excellent traction in rain or snow. You can rely on the XLM HT steel belted radio for a smooth, quiet ride, dependable year-round performance, and one mileage too. With a name you can trust, BF Goodrich. Ask for the XLM HT radio at Bill Anders Burlington Tire Service, 1222 South Church Street, Burlington. Birds is the only way to fly. Birds is reaching for the sky. Now Birds is miles ahead of the rest. The new Birds has landed thousands of new customers with lower prices and more variety on every aisle. Flying for the stakes? Yeah, nobody cuts it like Birds, including the price and the service. Fast. I mean, I don't have time to get into a holding pattern. Birds is the only way to fly. Well, that rough in the kicker penalty against the Bulldogs gives the Golden Lions another first down at the 38-yard line. Robert Lashley, the injured player for the Bulldogs, being hipped off the field, holding a shoulder. So the Golden Lions have another four-down situation deep inside Bulldog territory this time, and they just are going to run that clock out. Boy, Memorial Stadium in Charlotte, Bill. Hal Stewart's Trojans are on their way to a state title. They lead Charlotte Harding 34-7. So Garner High School and Anthony Barber get in line the Queen City tonight. They're undefeated on the season. And, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, they could beat some college teams. Oh, well, <laughs> I've seen that situation before. Uh, there will be no penalty on the play, just referees talking it over. Put it on the 38-yard line, 2.04 to go. Clock is running. Now less than two minutes to go in the game, and the score 19 to nothing. The Williams High Bulldogs can just about wrap up Disappointing loss here, but a very successful season, considering a couple of things that happened at the beginning of the season when they lost to Grimsley and then lost in overtime to Cummins. They were not the winners in the Mid-State 3A, as you all know. They were seeded second, and they uh, have come along and had a 10-game winning streak into tonight's game. Time out on the field. The Bulldogs want to stop the clock. They now want to save a little bit of pride and just score. So with time out on the field, we'll take a time out. Bulldogs trail 19 to nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Thank you. 
The staff at the original Sal's Italian restaurant just wanted to say thank you for making Sal's one of the most successful restaurants in Burlington. Sal's is a family restaurant with a friendly atmosphere. Choose from our impressive menu with over 100 items, including our outstanding Italian seafood, steaks, lobster, chicken, veal, pasta, subs, pizza, and more. Try Sal's for lunch or dinner, and don't forget our takeout and delivery services. That's the original Sal's Italian restaurant, Huffman Mill Road. James L. Massey Incorporated, South Church Street in Burlington. Well, when they come back from the Bulldog timeout, as the Bulldogs wanted to try to stop the ball, stop the clock to get the ball very quickly, Jerome George throws a pass complete to his tight end, Scott Church, for a first down inside the Bulldog 20-yard line to the 19, and they just might be scoring again with a minute 23 to go in the ball game. Bill Grubbs is on the far sideline of the Golden Lions, and Bill, does it look like they're trying to add another one here? Well, as the celebration started over here, uh, the plan is they're gonna ground Church Taylor after this is over, so dunk. Okay, that's the word from across the side. Okay, the Carry is very short as the Golden Lions are not in any hurry. Tony Moni. That's who carried the ball. That's who carried the ball. It's very short carries. They're just going to run out the clock. I don't know if the Bulldogs are going to take another timeout or not. Only 46 seconds to go in the ball game. And, and, and Bill, they've already named quarterback Jerome George as the MVP of the game tonight. And a great night he's had. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. The Golden Lions, West, were not trying to score. They just stood back and took a delay of game penalty, five yards. They still will have a second down and take one more snap with 33 seconds, and then the game will be over. And the guy who wears the toboggan cap on the far sideline, Shelby coach Jim Taylor, will collect his second state 3A title in a row. Ironically, the last team to win back-to-back -back titles or successfully to defend their title was the Williams Eye Bulldogs under Coach Pete Stout back in 1980 and 81, both undefeated seasons, 14 and 0. As a matter of fact, the seniors on that ball club never lost a ball game. They won every game as, uh, as the middle schoolers at Turrentine. Then they won every game as JVs, and they won every game as varsity ball players in 80 and 81. The Bulldogs on the Sam story won the game, won the state title in 1985, and now they lose the state championship game in 87. Still a tremendous amount of tradition at Williams High School. Another five yard penalty. A great effort tonight by the Bulldogs in what will be a losing effort though, but a Shelby team that came in multi-talented using not that many players and played their game tonight. Well, they've had three consecutive five-yard delay of game penalties and now decide to run one more play. And it's just straight ahead handoff to Tim Rhodes and he will go down inside the 30 to the 29. And now they do not have to snap the ball again. And the Shelby fans down across the way, I don't know if Bill Grubbs is in that melee in there anywhere. Bill, can you hear us? Bill, can you hear us on the far side? I don't think he can. <laughs> I don't think he can either. It is tremendous celebration, six, five, Four, three, two, one. The Shelby Golden Lions, Shelby, North Carolina. The Western Division, the State 3A champ. They defend their title successfully. Lost only one game this year. They lost to 4A school, Shelby Crest. And they have defended their title and they brought something like 2,000 fans up from Shelby tonight for the last football game of the season and defeat a good Williams ball club by 19 to nothing and while we try to find Bill Grubbs in all of that melee down on the field as the fans from Shelby celebrate as well they deserve to we'll try to find Bill Grubbs. We got Bill somewhere? I don't know he's cornered Jim Taylor I believe and if if Bill can stick a microphone in there William can you hear us down there? 
Bill, can you hear us down there on the sideline? He's got uh, Shelby head coach Jim Taylor cornered. And uh, Bill, why don't you take it away? Oh, uh, West. I think it's he's being distracted you know. a little bit by the people down on the field. So uh, maybe we ought to go to a break and then we'll come back. Okay, we'll be back with the final score, 19 to nothing. The Shelby Golden Lions winning. We'll be back in two minutes. For all weather performance and a quiet, comfortable ride, Bill Anders suggests the Advantage TA radio from BF Goodrich. Engineered for long mileage and backed by BF Goodrich's warranty, your assurance of quality, the Advantage TA. For a dependable ride and professional service, visit Bill Anders Burlington Tire Service, 1222 South Church Street, Burlington. Birds is the only way to fly. Birds is reaching for the sky. And now Birds is miles ahead of the rest. The new Birds has landed thousands of new customers with lower prices and more variety on every aisle. I see you've come back to Birds. I've tried the rest, but Birds has the prices and the variety. Besides, they've got a great landing strip. Birds is the only way to fly. Thank you. The staff at the original Sal's Italian Restaurant just wanted to say thank you for making Sal's one of the most successful restaurants in Burlington. Sal's is a family restaurant with a friendly atmosphere. Choose from our impressive menu with over 100 items, including our outstanding Italian seafood, steaks, lobster, chicken, veal, pasta, subs, pizza, and more. Try Sal's for lunch or dinner, and don't forget our takeout and delivery services. That's the original Sal's Italian Restaurant, Huffman Mill Road. Professionals at James L. Massey Incorporated, South Church Street in Burlington. Back at the stadium with Bill Huff, Jeff Morrison, and Bill Grubbs is down on the sideline. He's got victorious coach from Shelby, Jim Taylor. Bill? Uh, coach Taylor, great win tonight. Uh, the Bulldogs came out and... Gave a tremendous effort tonight. We're very... Every time somebody walks in between... Uh, them, we're pleased, we're pleased with the victory. Okay, Bill, that's a good interview. See if you can continue now. That's all okay. right, Bill. Coach Jim Taylor, I tell you what, the guy's won his second straight 3A title, and he doesn't let anybody bother him. All of his friends from Shelby come up, Coach, that's a great game. That's a great game. Forget the media. Scrap them. It doesn't make any difference. We won the 3A title tonight. I know. I talked to him yesterday, and I thought he was putting me on. You know, he did. I did, too. He was real short and real sweet, but uh, Bill Grubbs tonight from the sideline, it looked like the Golden Lions did everything they needed to do to win this contest tonight. They executed well on offense. They executed well on defense. From your viewpoint tonight on the sideline, how important was it to have all those guys going both ways? Well, Wes, I, I'm not sure if you're picking me up, but I, I got a little bit of a comment from Coach Taylor. He said that they did what they wanted to do and the Bulldogs got out of their game plan. They said that the Bulldogs just weren't able to run the ball, and that was the key. Feimster was not as confident in not passing the ball as he was last week. They knew that. They rolled the corners up on. That was the key to victory tonight. Feimster was throwing the ball sort of three-quarter, and he wasn't real sure what he was wanting to do with the football, and the Shelby defense was keyed on it, and they knew if they put their offense on the field, they were going to score points. Okay, Bill, thank you very much. And, Wes, I really think we'll find out later in the week that Feimster has reached it somewhere over that shoulder and was not passing with the accuracy. You know, last week he looked so cool, throwing the ball and laying it right in the groove. He was slinging the ball tonight, not throwing it. Yeah, we'll see if Bill can't get a player before we get away here tonight. And uh, I tell you, you're right, Bill, up in making that comment. And the other thing tonight, Ricky Turner didn't seem to be getting the holes that he would usually get when he carried the football. Tonight, Turner was surrounded. Uh, the Golden uh, Lion defense really had his number tonight when they started in this contest, and they contained him most of the evening. Well, you heard that uh, Bill said that Coach Taylor said we wanted to contain their running game and make them get out of their game plan. They did that exactly. Now, as you think back and look at it, 
Feimps had started passing early in the ball game. Even when they were down only three to nothing, he began to pass much more because they found out early also that they could not run on this ball club. Well, Bill has located Therome George, and he'll bring him to the sideline for a moment, and we'll see if we can't get a word with the guy who's been named the 3A MVP. And, Bill, if you can hear me down there, you might want to tell Therome that he has been selected the most valuable player of this 3A championship, and he played a heck of a ball game. Oh, Bill doesn't know he can't hear well, uh, There he MVP is. MVP of the state championship game, and... Uh, Nice run you made on the far sideline. Was 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 that a play that you guys had had designed, or did you just see something wrong with the Williams defense? No, uh, it was designed for me to come out and you know pitch off the monster. The monster could kind of sit there, you know, kind of just uh, fake a little pitch. He took a little step, and that's all it took. You're coming out 13-1. Did you think the Bulldogs were as tough tonight as you had seen them in the film and everything? Yeah, um, we just came out. And we did a great job on offense and on defense. That defense really was a highlight of the game. We uh, didn't allow no long bombs or nothing. I take there to play the exit line job, and um, I lined it the exit job. Out of that wishbone, what did you want to establish offensively tonight? The running game. Um, uh, really execute on the running game because I felt like that is our power and uh, that is our run, you know, our running game. Uh, offensively, what what weakness did you want to key on on that bulldog defense? Did I know you tried to throw the ball a little bit tonight, but you know that's that's some part. You know, some people say that's the strength of a bulldog defense. Uh, but you were able to run up the middle on them, and then you got outside, and the faking was real good out there. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, offense got carried our offensive line for that. They did a, a great job blocking for us, and boom, it was there. How much did you miss your leading rusher tonight? Um, just a bit. Uh, you know, it's nothing like having Cedric back there, but Cedric came in. He did a ex I mean, uh, Tim came in. He did an excellent job. If you had to pass the ball tonight, uh, which you know, when do you think you could have done it successfully? Do you think you could have done it early, or do you think you could have done it late in the ball game? Uh, probably late in the, in the ball game because we had warm really down in the beginning of the game. There was really up and in, in hyper and, and hyper and stuff, and it was really coming after me. The line was doing a good job holding up, but you know, the stress was at the beginning, and we just warmed down. On the block kick in the first half, when you got to the Williams punter, how big a play was that for you guys mentally? Did you know that you had him at that point? No, you know, uh, we never did think we had them. You know, we had to come out and play each each play with the best, you know, uh, give the best we had uh, have and stuff and everything. And, um, you know, it, it was a great job, whoever blocked it and stuff, and it was a big highlight for the ball game too. Terome George, congratulations on the MVP in your state championship. Okay, thanks a lot. Well, so, okay. Bill, you sure you're talking to a player or a coach down there? <laughs> That kid knew about as much about football as most coaches do, but they really executed exactly like he said, Wes, and I was very impressed with the youngster. They seem to have come to town and carried out their game plan maybe a little better than the Bulldogs carried Well, I'll tell you what, you know, Sam Story and uh, some of the other guys were saying, you know, he's like Jamel Holloway. The only difference I can see is he wears a white jersey and Holloway wears a birdie jersey because the Rome George did everything. I think we saw an excellent quarterback last week in Tarboro's Glenn Hart. Tonight, if it's possible, we saw a better one. Uh, has also the uh, defending state triple jump champion. <laughs> the entire backfield, included the rat before, was the relay team champion for the state. They've been out some pretty good in the shell. Yeah. Yeah. again, we're at the Burlington Memorial Gym. The Williams High Bulldogs lose the three eight to the Shelby Golden Lions. 19 to none. <laughs>